Hello everyone, this is Shruti Mishra and welcome to ET Auto. Commercial vehicle industry is moving towards a greener future. And to discuss how the CV part train mix is set to evolve in coming years, we are joined by Dr. N. Sarvanan, CTO of Ashok Leyland. Hello sir, a very, very warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for pleasure. Sir, I'll start by asking, by quoting actually a figure from uh, ACMA and McKenzie report, which has stated that around 7 to 10 percent of the commercial vehicle industry will turn electric by 2030. Now, when we talk about Ashok Leyland, it is very bullish on CNG side as well. So I just wanted to understand that when we combine the alternate fuel segment, how much of this uh, uh, future mobility pie you're gonna inc you're gonna see increasing in the coming years. I think it's a good question, but it requires a certain amount of assumptions, right? Even the seven percent depends on a number of factors. Uh, while I see the seven percent coming predominantly from the smaller commercial vehicles, the less the less than two ton, the last mile delivery, maybe even going up to three three and a half ton. That's where I think that segment will definitely move at a much faster than seven and a half percent rate. And of course, buses, city buses, definitely going to be much higher. I would think going forward at least 30, 40, 50 percent would be EVs because that's what I think the cities want and the government also is enabling that, right? So, so if you take those are the big chunks happening. The rest of it, EV penetration really depends on how the infrastructure plays out. For a long distance, a truck or a bus just need to have enough chargers or need to put so much more battery capacity. So I think it that will happen in pockets. So that is, I'm not betting big on the trucks itself moving to EVs that soon, that fast. But I think 7%, I think, yeah, if you aggregate these things, it will happen. CNG itself is more uh, more about the price arbitrage, right? I think if, if it happens that the CNG prices stabilize, at, uh, we, when we calculate TCO, we realize that if there is a 20 rupees arbitrage uh, between diesel and CNG, CNG switch makes sense uh, because he has to factor into account that uh, the initial cost, a little bit from the tanks and all that. And also he wants to have a little bit more cushion because in case tomorrow the prices uh, sort of... Uh, become a challenge. So 20 rupees arbitrage, if it happens steadily over a three, four, five, six months, then you start seeing the migration. As to how much it can happen, I mean, we, we saw spikes up to 50% in the ICV segment happen a couple of quarters back. It is possible that entire segments like that could move to CNG. Heavy trucks, <clears throat> again, availability of fuel, uh, the performance of the vehicle itself. So I would say, if you say 7% for EVs, maybe another uh, 5, 6, 7, 8% for CNGs. Definitely, 10-15% will be in 2030 moving away from uh, diesels. That's a very likely scenario. Okay, combining CNG, it will go up to 10 to 12, 15% yeah, easily. 15%. easily. Okay, so, uh, so my next question is on the uh, purchase criteria for commercial vehicles. So unlike cars, when it comes to a commercial vehicle, TCO, the total cost of ownership, plays an important role, a crit critical role. So when we see the alternate mobility, when we see the CNG or our movement towards mm. the electric, how do you think that we will be able to balance the mm. TCO as we are balancing it right now when it comes to for fleet owners or for the uh, for the uh, customers that are actually uh, purchasing in bulk? So what's your take on I this? I think that two, I think look at differently because I would look at CNG in one bucket. Uh, see, if you look at the CNG initial cost itself, is not very high compared to a diesel. It may be 15, 20% because ultimately the engine costs are similar. It's a tank cost. So I think the 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 way the customers purchase or the OEMs sell a CNG vehicle will be similar to a, a diesel vehicle. Outright purchase still remains a good possibility. Uh, with the fact that I talked about 20 rupees arbitrage, if that happens, then the recovery happens fairly quick, within six months, 12 months. There are also other factors, right? For example, within cities like NCR region, they don't allow diesel vehicles. So there are added bonuses. So I, I don't see a big challenge in the, uh, not just putting TCO as a buying criteria, but actually making it happen because the pay, payback is very fast in CNG. On the electric other ways, uh, the co initial cost is quite high, right? I mean, it's, it could be about two and a half, three times of a diesel vehicle. There, the question is, uh, how do we finance that, right? Uh, our current bus models are that the OEM or somebody as part of the OEM owns the vehicle, operates the vehicle, and gets paid uh, on a kilometer basis. That poses a challenge even for the OEMs. They, they, they just need to have all these vehicles on their books. Uh, if somebody's selling 5,000 vehicles, it's about 7,500 crores of uh, capital on sitting on the books. There's got to be, uh, even if they're convinced from a TCO perspective, this problem has to be solved. 
the financing of uh, EVs. Uh, how does it finance? I mean, there are different models being looked at, including the fact that uh, green funds coming in, uh, helping de-risk it. Uh, there are uh, partnerships being formed with uh, other financing uh, uh, firms to say, how do we, we own the asset, but we get the annuity and so on and so forth. So TCO itself not a problem in EVs. There are segments now, even uh, TCO becomes quite positive. But the question is, how do we finance the thing? How do we sort of pay for it? And that's a challenge. So, sir, do you think that the situation of financing is improving, especially when it comes to CV segment? Do you think so? I think in for diesels, it's it's improved for sure. EV is still nascent, too early, because buses is happening because there is a fame subsidy and it's it's happening. But in trucks, uh, I, I'm not seeing at a mature model. Uh, and it is going to take some time. Uh, initially, uh, the maybe the OEMs will... Uh, do something like mobility as a service even for trucks, but in the longer term, there's got to be better business models. Yeah. And lastly, sir, as per ET Auto analysis, uh, CV industry as on a whole, uh, it's investing around 2 to 2.5 percent on the R&D. Now with the coming of different power trains and drive trains, are we going to see that in the coming years, this quantum of R&D uh, expenditure is going to increase. Can we take it up to uh, like 5% uh, in the near term, in the next five years? I think what will happen is, yes, it will increase. But what will also happen is, a uh, the, the, lot of the companies in Australia have a very large portfolio of diesel products. So the investments in diesel would not be as high because the investments happen because of BS6 transition, right? So that, that transition is finished. Almost the entire portfolio is now available. Now the CNG shift also is happening. So that, that part of the uh, business or the technology will see less investments. But the other portion actually did large investment. So it may not double from 2.5 to 5. What will happen is this 2.5 in diesel will probably go down a bit. Uh, you'll add a little bit more for the CNG. But also most OEMs will look at and say, how do you do this smartly? There's also a certain amount of risk. Technology, some technologies are quite new. So rather than investing everything yourself, what you'll start seeing is models where you work with partners, you work with startups, you work with suppliers to say how to code up technology so that the risk also is shared. So I think the investments will happen, will definitely be higher. Whether it's 5%, I don't know. Definitely more than 2.5% for sure. Yeah, But I think also there'll be new ways of working with partners, with startups too, so that the risk is shared and technology is faster to implement. And so just one last question. So when we are uh, thinking that uh, that uh, uh, the R&D pie is going to increase uh, uh, in, in the coming years, so uh, does it mean that uh, that we are going to see more number of partnerships and M&As in the field of alternate mobility within the CV segment? Yeah, it, it need not necessarily be C. It need not be uh, strong JVs or M&As, right? Uh, these days, a lot of it is loose partnerships, right? It's like uh, you look at a lot of the companies, they have partners with multiple partners. So I think that will be a, a good model where you work not necessarily exclusively, but you work with a certain agenda code developed. That's one model. In some technologies, yes, some specific technologies, there will be uh, some M&A activities on technology, but I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you for speaking Pleasure. to me. Thank you.